Hello, my name is Jessica Wynn, and this is my American History Document Portfolio Project on the different reforms and social movements. I chose to do the temperance movement, and it was a movement against the drinking and selling and consuming of alcoholic beverages. It was a movement trying to end alcohol abuse, and the violence and conflicts came along with it. Reasons and causes for the movement was that, for one, the amount of alcohol consumption was sickening to many. A lot of reformers said that alcohol caused sickness, poverty, violence, and even crime. Reformers also said that drinkers were wasting their money on alcohol rather than spending it on their families. And also, alcohol made many people, mostly men, rather abusive, so many men would come home after the bar or after drinking and beat their wives and children. And this made many families, many women, especially like very scared for their lives and their children's lives. So this is why many of the temperance reformers were women. Neil Dow is a very important American temperance reformer. He was born in Maine, and he grew up in a Quaker household, so he was definitely not for violence at all. He never went to college because his father thought that college would bring him down, so he never went to college. And in 1851, he was elected the mayor of Portland, but he was definitely more famous for being a temperance reformer. See, in the same year, he made a petition calling the state legislature to create a law that banned the sale of alcoholic drinks. The law was known as the Maine Law. He continued to spread his opinions and thoughts against liquor. He was also nicknamed the Napoleon of Temperance and the Father of Prohibition. Later on, he served in the Civil War, which is kind of ironic in a way, or strange, because he grew up in a Quaker household. But anyways, after the war, he returned to his work against alcohol, and he died in Portland on October 2nd. For strategies, the reformers made pamphlets, posters, songs, and even plays to inform others about the dangers that came with drinking, including abuse, violence, crime, and poverty. Reformers also started groups to make people pledge against heavy drinking, and there were many spoken lectures that were against the alcohol consumption and the lectures informed people why choosing to drink would be a poor decision. And to the side is an example of one of the posters. The effects and outcomes, um, I'd say the temperance movement was a success to some extent. It did allow America to reevaluate their thoughts on alcohol and laws like the main law that prohibited manufacturing and selling of alcohol were made, but they didn't really last that long. These are my primary sources. My first one is called Youth's Temperance Lecture, and it was a book by Charles Jewett, and it was published by Whipple and Damerel. Jute was for the temperance movement, and Whipple and Damerel was a published company that printed a lot of things on temperance. So there was definitely some bias within it because both like the publishing company and the author wanted to inform people about the hideous side of drinking and the violence effects of it. The excerpt right here to the side talks about how a drunk man came home and beat his wife, who gladly escaped his grasp, but she ended up leaving her son to defend for himself, and the drunk man kills his son without even thinking about it. Jewett added this excerpt in to allow people to see how violent one can get when they are drinking and do things that they'll regret, because the excerpt wouldn't fit on here, but I read further down, and they went to he went to like court and everything, and he didn't even know what he was doing, and he felt so bad because he can never take back what he did.
Um, my next one is a political cartoon titled Death on a Striped Pig. Uh, this cartoon was drawn by David Claypool Johnson. He was a cartoonist and very into art. He made some other different reform cartoons type thing. So in this piece, there is a striped pig and the striped pig is a symbol for the alcoholic men. The Grim Reaper is on top of him as a symbol of death. The pig's feet are standing on the Holy Bible. The pig also seems to be stomping on a mother and a child. And around the pin are unconscious drunk men. And I thought the image to the idea of how drinking causes one to forget the importance of his or her family and faith. If you see right here, the pig doesn't really notice what's going on. Um, I think it's also saying that if you let alcohol consume you, then you let it control you. As death controls you as well. Um, this next political cartoon is named The Victim of Ardent Spirits. This is another cartoon by David Claypool Johnson and was published by Whipple and Damrell. And of course there's some bias because Whipple and Damrell published a lot of things on Temperance and David Claypool Johnson did a lot of art for Temperance. And this cartoon shows a drunk man resting on a barrel of rum while holding a bottle of rum lying on the floor of a distillery. There are little demons tearing up his body and putting parts of him in these wheelbarrows. There are wheelbarrows that are titled heart, liver, and stomach. And there's also these demons right here that are picking at his brain. And as you can see right here, there's a demon or Satan or the devil in the back kind of fanning this fire that's fueling these demons that are picking at his body. And I said in this cartoon, Johnson is showing how drinking damages your body parts, especially your heart, brain, liver, and stomach, which are major organs. And it also projects the image of how alcohol robs you, not just figuratively, but also alcohol takes the money from your pockets. And you can't really see here, but there's a demon or, I don't know, a little demon spawn picking at his pocket, getting all the loose change. And I think this represents the temperance movement because the, I, the whole idea is that alcohol ruins you and your health. So I think this picture shows it pretty well. My next primary source is a play named The Drunkard. It was a drama play based on temperance in five acts and was first performed in 1844. It was written by William H. Smith with the help from John Pierpont. The play was an overall success and was widely popular and known throughout America at the time. So in this play, the main character, Edward, is introduced to brandy, which is an alcoholic drink, by a character named Cribs. And the reason why Cribs introduced Edward to brandy and became his friend and everything is because Cribs, like, hated his father. So he wants to, like, get back to his father by ruining his son's life. So several drinks of it, and Edward was hooked. As he fell in love with alcohol, he caused his wife and daughter to fall out of love with him. Full of regret, he left his family and moved to New York, living in shame. And then one day a reformer by the name of Rentsclaw came up to him and opened his eyes and tried to save him, which he did, and helped him through his recovering process. The main writer, William H. Smith, was 
a recovered alcoholic himself, and he used his experience with alcohol to write parts of the play. And in this play, he wanted to open others' eyes, telling alcoholics that they can turn their lives around. And he said this through his character, Edward, because Edward was alcoholic, but saved by a reformer. So he was basically telling others that they can be saved too. And Smith wanted the viewers to understand that no matter how far you are into your drinking habits, you can always come back to God and be saved. My last primary source was another political cartoon titled The Drunkard's Progress. And this cartoon was created by Nathaniel Courier. He was an American lithographer who was also a Unitarian. He was in charge of a very successful printmaking company named Courier and Ives. Okay, so this print depicts the nine steps an alcoholic takes from his first drink to his ending result of suicide. And at the center of all the various steps, there is a crying woman and her child. I thought this picture sh was a really good representation of what the Temperance Movement was trying to get into people's heads, and that is the fact that it only takes one drink for a person to become an alcoholic and eventually get attached to alcohol, leaving his loved ones behind and leave living in a life of sadness. This is my bibliography. And then...